And all right, here we go. So welcome to the March 2022 edition of Key Ministries Disability Ministry Video Roundtable. So today, since it is like almost to the day, the two year anniversary of that day in March, uh, I thought it would just be kind of a good idea to just check in with each other and um, see how it's going. Um, a lot of you have been very frequent participants in our idea share. And so we have had the opportunity to kind of check in and help each other out there. But um, I thought it would just be, I, you, know, you know, a lot has happened in two years. And um, so I thought, you know, we can just acknowledge that it's been a lot. <laughs> Um, so just like personally, how are you doing and how's your ministry doing? You know, what's what's your church like these days? Um, for those of you on the idea shares, we talk a lot about pandemic blessings and some things that our churches are doing today because we had to get creative during COVID. So um, I'm just I'll stop talking now. So I will open it up and, um, you know, just tell us how it's going. How are you doing? Um, what's going on in your neck of the woods these days? Would anybody like to start? This will be a really short meeting, guys. <laughs> I know Meekins will start, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I was. I try to let other people start, but you know, I, I'm always chomping at the bit because it's so exciting to share what God is doing, but we've been pretty much fully back in terms of things being available to us since September, October of 2020. 2020. So we were probably the early, one of the early, early people that, you know, churches that got back in, in swing, but we're still experiencing um, lo a loss of volunteers and families that won't come back or can't come back. Mm -hmm. uh, but the pandemic blessing of it all is that we have learned mostly, not every department is doing it, but we have learned mostly how to incorporate people who can't come back. And that's cool because those people were lost and not able to participate in what we're doing. So everything that Tom and I do at least is hybrid. And so we, we're still learning what we're doing, but our life group that we started that was open for people who have uh, disabilities and people who do not. Um, we wanted to create a family because that's what family is all about. It's about everybody and everything they bring to the table. So um, that is thriving. We had, I think, like 15 people there on Sunday and that's thriving. But we have somebody that comes from Washington State all the way to Central Virginia every single Sunday morning. And she is so grateful for us. She's so grateful for us that she just took a job that has a satellite office in Sterling, so she can make her way to Virginia and eventually to Lynchburg. <laughs> so that's, that's amazing. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's um, going on. And then we've had wonderful opportunities to bring in leadership to our parent support group. And that's what the latest and greatest has been. It's been fabulous because they are, I think, a little more sensitive. They've always been wonderfully caring people, but they're a little bit more sensitive to our particular uh, people group, if, if for lack of a better way of saying it. And so we've had the, the senior pastor come and speak for about 20 minutes at one of our meetings. And then we've had the next gen pastor, who is actually the one that's over our ministry, come and speak for about 20 minutes. And it gives the people in the room the opportunity to see that they care. Mm -hmm. And then next month, we'll have the uh, pastor that is over oh. all the ministries of the church. So we oh. are doing our very best to make ourselves present <laughs> in a very large church. So I'll stop there. I could talk all day, but I'll stop there and just, you know, praise the Lord for what he's doing. Um, but we have come a long way. And I think the pandemic really has helped disability ministry along in sensitivities. So that is amazing. Thank you very much, Julie, for sharing. Um, so what, a, and the, my only you know, bone to pick was he didn't actually do the hashtag. <laughs> the hashtag. So, okay. so this is so cool. And the fact that now like senior leadership is taking notice and involved. I mean, that what a cool, cool thing. And that, you know, perhaps wouldn't have happened. Right. Um, maybe, um, you know, if, 
if not for how you have had to be creative over these these last two years. So um, very cool. That's very encouraging and a great way to kick off our discussion. So thank you. Any questions for the Meekins? I'm pointing this way because that's where they are on my screen. No, okay. Would anybody else like to share what's going on, how you're feeling? Questions you have, what you wanna know about? All right, let's 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 do a little poll. Oh, Christy, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm in the western suburbs of Chicago at Wheaton Bible Church. Um, we're a large church. Um, we opened up pretty early as a general congregation. Um, I think like July 2020, it's all kind of a blur. Um, but went mask optional route. And so a lot of my special needs families did not come back right away. And most, like, I still don't have a kid's room open on Sunday mornings, whereas before we had probably 15 kids that would, would be there on a Sunday morning. Um, on the flip side, my teens and adult room is booming. Um, we've got nine kids, nine teens and adults who come regularly now, and we're getting more and more back who were pre, pre-pandemic uh, families coming back. So that's super exciting. Um, and so I'm doing the counting my blessings and, you know, the, the Lord knows his timing for where everybody is at this point. Um, it does finally feel like the Chicago area is starting to open up finally. You know, I'm going into grocery stores and there's just, you know, it's everybody's not wearing masks and it just feels a little more open. So that that feels promising for this summer and spring. Um, I have been doing a mom. So I've been on staff for two years, but I was a family within the church in the special needs program for since my now 17 year old was three, he has autism. Um, so I've been running a, a mom's morning out. Uh, this will be our 10th year. Uh, we've had the last two years off and I'm so super excited that the Lord has provided a home to, to hold it in and at the end of April. He's providing um, donations from our local Chick-fil-A and from local, our, our women's Bible study is providing little gift bags for our moms so that we can have a really good respite for them. Um, and I have so missed that the last two years. And so I'm really excited to get all the moms together. And we do a, we have a speaker um, who winsomely shares the gospel. So it is outreach, but it's also just welcoming them and helping them uh, just feel connected. And so I'm super excited to get back to that. Um, that's my big project I'm working on right now. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, if there's if there's a pandemic blessing in there, it's <laughs> that having that time without it is going to make this time that much more sweet. Precious. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, good. Yay. All right. Would anybody else like to share? a quiet group today. Um, all right, so let's see, I guess the show of hands or like click, you know, your reaction button. Um, how, how are you, well, let me see what our reaction buttons are. Uh, no, they're not good. Okay. Um, uh, give me a, give me a thumbs up if you have an adequate number of volunteers, a heart if you're overflowing with volunteers, or a whatever that face is if you like are severely lacking in volunteers. So you're, you're good. Okay, we've got lacking over here. <laughs> the Meekins are just laughing. Ryan's okay. Doug is, yeah, needs more volunteers. Wayne's okay. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of hearts, so nobody's overflowing with volunteers at this point, but um, all right. So um, does anybody want to talk about what they're doing with volunteers, you know, how you're feeling about it? Um, you know, do you need help with outreach for volunteers? Anybody want to ask? I guess I could say, um... Well, I'm not in a ministry. I'm in Young Life, uh, okay. from, um, so it's not in the church ministry. But we You're work with churches, so <laughs> well, we're volunteer driven, exactly. So the the pre-pandemic days, um, we were overflowing. I would have said a heart for sure, uh -huh. um, but obviously during the pandemic, a lot of life changed, not just 
during the pandemic, but people had changed where they were in life or whether they were uh, expecting children and lots of different things. So it, a career change, so lots of different things, but we are based on the church. So if we weren't in person, we weren't seeing people, obviously that's what happened and it kind of fell through. So now with things opening back up, it's, you know, reaching the church, my home church, other churches around the area to see um, where people are. And I think it was a really good thing that um, kicked it off and it's kind of doing it is night to shine. We had a lot of volunteers for that, wow. uh, helped run that and people saw what it was all about and knew what Capernaum was and especially ministry for people with disabilities was all about as well. So I'm hoping that continues over um, speaking with a lot of people, but now, no, not a lot of traction as of yet, but it's good that people are aware and that's a good start for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you feel like who's coming back faster? And I, I get that some of your volunteers are out of that life stage. And so you, you have to recruit new, but um, volunteers or like students? It's a little bit of both. Um, it's a little bit of both. I would say, you know, high school kids that are helping us or buddies are, are really been consistent throughout. So that's not been an issue. It's, it's more adults that we need. I would say um, any college age or above adults that could help. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I know the, there's a Capernaum group, Young Life Capernaum group that meets at our church and um, they like, they've, it seems like they've been pretty, like it's been pretty well attended um, with kind of dips here and there as base, I mean, basically how, whatever COVID is up to in our area at the time. So, you know, we've had some times in this past year where it's like COVID, what's COVID? And then times where like everything shuts down again. So, um, and I think Capernaum has kind of gone very much along with that. So, um, all right. Who else would like to share what's going on? How you feeling? Wayne, thank you. Yeah. So I would can follow up with Douglas. So I haven't been here in a bit, and I uh, my buddy just recently sent me the the invite back. So I'm very happy to be back here. Yeah, so, happy. Um, so I represent the Journey Church in Newark, Delaware, and we have a very active uh, special needs ministry, specifically in our young young adult group. And that's more of an outreach program. We do events throughout the month, and it's not so much in the church, but it's more of we do the events in the church, but it's not related to the church. But kind of what Doug was saying, from Night to Shine, we had an influx. We probably had over 100 volunteers at our Night to Shine experience this year, which has bled into our events where we put out serving opportunities and we fill them up. Where our challenges are coming, and I would love to have any advice, um, is we are starting a 12 to 18 um, year, year old group in our church and basically that is a, a need that we have right now in a special needs. So we have birth through fifth grade. We have rooms for those special for those with special needs in that age group. Then we have the young adult ministry, which is very active and vibrant. They don't need a lot of support. We just have a lot of programs, but where we're serving is the 12 to 18 population. We just have the approval in the church. I'm just a volunteer, but I lead the special needs ministry. So the church has approved us to build a sensory room, which is awesome. And um, we have a decent amount of volunteers that want to help, but our struggle is, is creating a buddy relationship volunteer, not just somebody to kind of hang out with us, but that one-to-one -one buddy relationship. So if anybody has any advice of what has been a successful opportunity for that, even if it's a handful of them, how do we establish that as we don't just need you in the room, we need somebody that serves alongside with that individual, as well as maybe attends church with that individual, has become friends with that individual, not so much a serving person in a room. Long-winded answer, but that's kind of our need right now. We have a decent amount of volunteers, but it's that person, that type of individual we're looking to create and communicate to so we can establish that. So. All right. So you're looking for like that relational ministry opportunity. Yeah. How to build that, how to actually communicate that to the volunteers that are coming in to have them kind of be a part of that as we build this age group um, out as far as this ministry goes. So Again, just like Doug said, we have an influx of people as the young adult ministry has driven all of our volunteers in. They're seeing the power and the blessing of both being able to bless a family as well as being blessed by serving in this ministry. Um, now we're trying to take it to the next level where when they, we have individuals that serve and greet with us, we have individuals that make coffee, we have individuals that just need to be in a room. 
but they want to have that consistent relationship where you serve with that one individual, no matter where they are. And that's the struggle that I have. Mm -hmm. All right. Any suggestions for Wayne? It's my friend Al right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, just a question, Wayne. Um, are you able to tap into the university um, um, community for, for help? I think we do have that capability. So University of Delaware is a very big university, which is literally like five miles down the road from our church. And I, my that's, alma mater. oh, nice. That's my <laughs> wife's alma mater too. So that's what uh, I actually wrote down when I was talking, could I tap into that? But I didn't know if, if they don't attend a, a church. So I, you, you, you mentioned that, do you have, in, do you have universities that actually come to your church, even though they don't attend the church for serving hours and things like that? Is that what you mean? Uh, there's just an uh, 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 abundance of people and special needs that are looking for places to, to work. But yeah, if it's not a, a Christian um, university, then they're, you have to vet them somehow. Yeah, and I'm not overly concerned. We, I'm, if they're Christian or not, I'm, obviously that's a, a huge principle. But I mean, whether they attend our church or not. And, and I was going to reach out to them because we do partner with a lot of organizations to go outside the church to see if we can bring individuals in to kind of, that would be uh, call, trying to get service hours as well as fitting this need. So it's a good good point. I wrote down University of Delaware while I was talking. Wayne, at Uni I'm Abby, I'm from Dover. Um, yeah, Abby. Down, just to south of the canal from you. Yeah. Um, we have uh, the Center for Disability uh, at UD would be your big contact up there i can figure okay. out that name i have it somewhere but they awesome. have a whole center for disability study up there that would be a great connecting point for you thank at you UD. yeah i'll work on finding that today appreciate it wow this is pretty awesome who knew who knew delaware, delaware was a small state i have contacts yeah. here <laughs> <laughs> all right any other suggestions for wayne that's a great one though I mean, I would, my suggestion would be like to, um, you know, you have some folks who have connected like, you know, through Night to Shine or, um, you know, even maybe uh, there may be people who as students move up in age groups, like those relationships continue and your volunteers move up along with, um, like they just continue that relationship, I don't know. Um, but I think when people get that, ex like when they, when it, like a true friendship is developed, then like they want to continue that um, outside of just like the serving opportunity um, that's presented, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think the challenge of what we've we've been doing is we have a lot of serving opportunities. So our team serves a, alongside with. Um, so for example, we we host a, the Down Syndrome Association's dances at our church um, three or four times a year, and we have also our own little dances once a month every. And but so our group kind of serves food, kind of dances with them, but there's no one to one relationship that's being built out of that. So I'm looking to start with one of our brainstorming for our team is how can we create opportunities um, to build for serving where we can build those one to one relationships and maybe it's some type of craft event that we do where each you, you buddy up where we have a number of volunteers match the number of guests to come and it's a one to one. So those are the type of things that we're trying to brainstorm now as a team, because we do you're right we do need to build serving opportunities where that relationship can be built. And then from that, we can we can then tailor that to, hey, you know, you made a great relationship with so-and-so, would, would you be interested in serving with them when they come to church? So um, that's a great, great idea and a reminder that that's kind of the ideas that we need to have. Do you do respite? Do you have respite events? Our respite events are really tailored towards our dances. So it's more towards our young adults at this stage. We don't have a very active due to COVID ministry inside the church right now. It's very active as far as our outreach. Um, so our young adults are kind of dropped off, but we, we they're um, self advocates kind of where more or less they can be dropped off. There's no special care really needed. Mm -hmm. um, and those that do have some extra care, we are, our, our volunteers are used to them. So we know how to how to make it sure that they have a great time. So there's a, that's kind of the things that we're doing, but no, you know, it's a challenge for us in 2022 to really have respite nights for 
those families that really truly need a respite, you know, and that's the, the kind of the next layer of what we're working on is building our volunteers up to more specialized volunteers than just, you know, your average person who just wants to serve. So, you know, that's an, another layer that we're working on as well. Wayne, may I ask a follow-up question to that? When you're looking at these volunteers and getting that one-to-one relationship, is it a certain day of the week or a time? Is it during your main services at well, our, church or is it a different day of the week? So our goal is church. Um, we're Because with the sensory rooms being built and then this age group of 12 to 18 is what's coming into that room. So our main goal is to, to help get them into church versus being in this room, as well as create it uh, an atmosphere where they serve just as much as they come to church. So the buddy relationship in the church is what we're really hoping for. However, I think um, what was just mentioned by Beth is that we, sh- we, if we created these opportunities where we could build relationships in our respites or in our extra serving opportunities that could then bleed its way into church services. So I think that's a great suggestion that I will start here on my paper. That makes sense. I know what, so I'm in Minnesota in the Midwest, um, I represent a church with 10 campuses. We have two designations for our volunteer support. One is a room assistant volunteer. So it's kind of watching the large group instruction within um, our kids and student ministries. And then we have side-by-side volunteers. And one thing that we've had great success in is really loading up our room assistant volunteers and then watching those organic relationships happen and moving them then to match them up one-on-one with a particular kid or student, uh, but that helps. It's a good on-ramp for our volunteers to feel comfortable. They get access, you know, they get understanding of our kids and student ministries and how things flow and what our wins are. And then what our kids care is, what do we call our disability ministry, how that functions and what we're looking for and how we're looking to support the kids and students. So they get a really good on-ramp um, and an understanding of how things flow. And then we match them up uniquely based on, you know, chemistry and their personality and their comfortability with certain disability um, diagnosis. So I don't know if that falls into kind of what you're looking to set up or if that would be helpful in the context of what you're looking at, but. And then that's great advice. And that's what we have right now. I have for the sensory room alone, I have about 18 people that have signed up to, to help us. And so that's great for our church to have that many people um, that want to be a part of this new sensory room. And then you're right as they get to know who comes into that room, because we don't have a lot at this point. Um, the relationships we're praying that that's what would develop into those relationships. So I love that. And, and I think, um, thank you, Carrie, for sharing. I think um, organic is the key word there. Yes. Um, so, I mean, yes, you're presenting this opportunity, but then, you know, like what's God going to do with that among or between individuals. And like, that's the cool part, like when those relationships form and then um, it can go from there. I love that. Appreciate all your voice. I think if I may to piggyback off yeah. of that too, yeah, um, our ministry is run so much by word of mouth from families, right? They get connected, they get great support, they feel comfortable, they let mm-hmm. other people know um, and new families join our church and join our ministry that way. So very much word of mouth. Um, where we're struggling right now, where I'm sure a lot of you are, is getting volunteers, like recruiting. What have been effective recruiting strategies or or places that you've recruited that you've had great luck in finding new volunteers all right um, so that's a good question yes go okay. ahead abby um we're a nonprofit, so we're not part of a church our goal is to get our families to churches in the community so we kind of do the opposite we get our volunteers to build relationships and then they pull our families to where they are going the church uh, we volunteer wise we hit a um, I actually get invited to three or four high schools in their teacher academy programs. I mean, every state looks different, but build relationships with their teacher academies. And then I get an hour or two in the class or middle public school where I can talk about what we do. And then out of there, we get a bunch of high school kids that jump in that need hours. I'm like, I will give you hours. I will sign off on your hours you know, and they, they show up and they have shown to be faithful. We've actually pulled some staff members out of those programs over the years. Um, but we like getting into the local high schools in some capacity, you know, has really helped us and really gotten those kids interested in education, those kids interested in spec ed, you know, to say, Hey, here's a great hands-on opportunity. It will either freak you out and you'll change your major when you go to college, or you'll just buy into it. Um, 
And I've seen it both happen. I've seen deer in the headlights and I've seen kids just enter right into the mess and the dirty of our respite nights. So the local high schools have been a huge winner for us. Um, it's, you know, finding that right person to get in, get you in the door is key. But once you find that connection, they're a lot of them are willing to have you come and teach and train on what disability is. And, you know, they see us as experts for disabilities. So they want to know, get an outside approach on it. So that's how what has been a huge winner for us. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. And I know over the last two years, it's been difficult, um, you know, to like physically get into high schools. <laughs> Um, but I think, you know, depending on where you are in the country or, hey, Canada, I see you there. Um, welcome. Um, it's, you know, things are starting to open up and visitors are allowed back in schools. But even just establishing that relationship with, you know, it might be the key club advisor or, you know, the National Honor Society advisor. Um, but um, yeah, that is a great place to get volunteers. Who else has some volunteer advice? for Carrie, because surely this is something we're all, all dealing with. I know our church uh, does some really uh, easy, what I consider non-threatening um, events. Uh, we have monthly events uh, for our adult ministry where it's either bowling or karaoke or movie day, or you know, it's just, it's, it's something that's not necessarily um, taxing on a volunteer anybody can just come and show up and just be a part of the event um and then from there a, kind of a natural step from there is, is maybe volunteering once uh, at a respite event so it's a little bit more intense you know they've taken that first step to come to a non-threatening um one-time event one of our monthly events and if if they're cool with a respite and then you pretty much know that they're cool to to really jump into ministry. So I would just say, hey, do do some fun events that uh, aren't heavy on any type of teaching, just just heavy on fun and relationship building. And uh, I think that would go a long way into allowing people to have an opportunity to see that uh, it's not as scary as people think. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I want to uh, bring up a question that was posted in the chat. Um, and so, you know, especially if you're bringing in like for the fun factor event, you might have different volunteers than your Sunday morning volunteers. And I think this question kind of gets there. Do high school volunteers have to be Christians to be buddies? So would anybody like to share what the policy is in your church? Diana, you have to, yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, I've, um, again, double or multitasking right now. So that's why <laughs> it's me. Um, I'm usually not uh, shy of the camera, but um, I've got a lot going on and a meeting coming up at noon. But I did want to share, I've been listening into everything and um, we're kind of a mishmash of a lot of what I'm hearing from around. And one of the challenges that I have is not people that are interested in volunteering is that to volunteer at our church, it is such a rigorous process that if you're 18 and over, it takes a minimum of two and a half to three hours and, and multiple references. And we have to vouch that we've checked with them. And most of it is tied in with our safe ministry training, which has to do with um, sexual predators. And even for our teens, it's pretty rigorous and has to be documented. In the beginning, I was much more intimidated by that and thinking like, oh my gosh, you know, all these ducks in a row. But the bottom line is, I don't know. I mean, and they do, we have to have a testimony that they are Christian, whether they are um, teenagers or adults. Um, you know, the thing is, is from my experience, and I've been in ministry a very long, long time. People are gonna tell you what you wanna hear. They're gonna give you the references that they're gonna be good ones, you know? So I feel like in many ways, and in all my years, we've never had an issue in disability ministry with, with, with a, a volunteer being inappropriate. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I have to, I'm, so I'm kind of in, I'm a gray person. I'm not a black and white person, but I have to go along with my church's policies. I can't just defy them. Right. So it's kind of trying to find that balance and um, work with people. And on the plus side of that though, is the ones that we get that have gone through that process are so amazing. They're not flakes. I mean, once they've been through that, they are going to come, you know, every, you know, time and, um, you know, be so reliable. So 
And then the other thing that I was just kind of hearing from talking to everybody and how you started off, Beth, was you know, what it was before the pandemic to what it is now. And I think that this group has really helped me a lot, but it's been really hard because I'm in, after two years, I'm still comparing. I mean, mm -hmm. I lunch with some people from Special Olympics that really want to partner with us and get volunteers and yesterday, and, you know, and they're talking about how many families we have or who's there. It, I mean, I find myself almost apologizing, like, well, we only have this many now, but before the pandemic, <laughs> we had, you know, so many. And um, I just have to get past that. I just need to move on and go, this is what it is now and, and, and move forward from here. And, you know, and I really, you know, was listening a lot to Wayne about that buddy, you know, concept. And that is so frustrating at our church because we have five services and we don't require registration for children or special needs for anything that it just, you come when you want to come. And so we don't have consistency. We don't have consistency week to week. We don't have consistency service time to service time. And we are finding, or at least I'm thinking that to me, again, going back to that comparison that I don't want to make, um, we have a higher need for buddies. And a lot of it are kids that just are struggling with high anxiety. Um, maybe it's ADHD, but this whole pandemic has just thrown their education. It's thrown their course off. So these are kids that three years ago wouldn't even probably require a buddy. And now we're trying to work with that. So I guess, you know, I don't really have any good suggestions, but just um, just kind of chiming into where we're at. And um, even though I was super busy this morning, these, this, these chats and these groups and these ideas and, you know, hearing everything and just um, listening to, you know, people like the Meekins and all their positivity. <laughs> It's like it's like my little shot in the arm that I need. So thank you to everybody for that. And I'll just keep listening. But thanks. Thanks for sharing, Diane. And I totally agree. Um, and yeah, it's thank you for acknowledging that things are different now than they were two years ago. And, um, you know, even if we're, you know, kind of back up and running and all that. Um, yeah, things have definitely changed, including, um, you know, how our individuals and families and all that are feeling as well. So, and what they've been experiencing the last couple of years. Yeah, good point. Um, all right, I forgot what the question was. Oh, the question was, do high school volunteers have to be Christians? Does, does, everybody, does everybody's church have a um, like ministry in the light, safe ministry, whatever you wanna call it, um, policy slash training that your volunteers have to go through. Is it, I'm seeing heads. If you don't, I highly recommend that your church puts that in place. Um, it's really important for um, the students and it's really important for the volunteers. Um, especially, and Andrea is pointing out, especially for attendees who have communication difficulties and aggressive tendencies. Um, I think a professional OT, TA, et cetera, is more important than if that buddy is actually a Christian. Okay, of course it's imperative they go through the plan to protect safety training, just my thought. Yeah, agree. Um, so yes, so sometimes um, we are looking for like specialists, you know, could be a behavior specialist or somebody that comes with um, some of the skills that might be needed in a classroom. Um, but regardless, yes, every, it's, I feel very strongly that everybody needs to, to follow that, um, the protection policy. So please, if your church is not doing that, please talk to your leadership about putting something in place. Um, any other thoughts on, on that or anybody wanna share how it works at your church? In, um, in one church where I do Capernaum, um, it's a Catholic parish and anyone, any connection with kids, even with young life that isn't part of the church, we had to go through the, whatever the Catholic training was there. It was pretty rigorous. Mm -hmm. So they want anyone, even parachurch that was there going through that training. Yeah. And that's, I mean, again, it's, it's for your protection as well. So um, good. All right. What else? What else? Um, anybody have any, uh, other fun events that you, that you have coming up, um, that might be good, um, volunteer recruitment tools. 
Oh, and while you're thinking about that, let me just read from the chat. Um, of course, any volunteer is likely to know it's important they respect the Christian values being taught and there's to be no teaching of another faith. Yeah, that I think if you're not, um, if they don't have to like give their testimony, um, that would definitely be at least the minimum for sure. I think, I think for our church, you have to kind of say where you are in your faith journey. Um, but I think it's kind of a profession of faith. I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I filled it out. Um, anybody hosting a respite event coming up? I know you don't all do respite events, but for those of you that do respite events, yeah. Abby. We're scheduled out through December with our respites. We do it once a month. Um, April's our off month, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, we've been, our respite nights have been thriving. Our, tons of new families have come out of the woodwork. Our old families are finally starting to come back. So we're getting a combo of all the things now. Um, we're also in prep mode for, we do a family camp in August. So we're in prep mode, recruitment mode for that as well right now. So we just have a lot on our plate. We have a breakfast coming up for our donors. Like we just have a lot happening in the next couple months. So we're, we're kicking strong over here. We also run a before and after care program. Okay. Um, well, I remember. Yes, 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 yes. Such a cool so thing. That's an ongoing thing. That's always an adventure when you have 20 year olds on your staff. So yes. <laughs> that's busy. Yeah. It's a lot. There's a lot happening in Dover right now. So <laughs> and my son is doing buddy break as a guest this Saturday. And that church has it scheduled through the end of 2022 every other month. Yeah, my church is quarterly and this we were supposed to have a respite in January, but we ended up making it a respite to go because our, you know, like our numbers spiked right when we were recruiting volunteers. Um, but we're we're set for our spring one, which will be in May. So and summer scheduled as well. Um, speaking of being busy, I'll put in a little plug. Um, so many of you know, and many of you are coming or involved. Um, so Key Ministry is hosting our National Disability Ministry Conference called IFL 2022 Inclusion Fusion Live um, in Cleveland, April 29th and 30th. And um, we really would love to see you up there. Um, I know several, I'm looking around and several of you are coming and I'm just really excited to have these conversations in person, but we're gonna have a lot of um, networking time built in to the conference. And um, if you have any questions about it, um, please reach out because we would just love to have you, have you there. Um, in the chat, um, any surprises you've come across as you reopen, anything specific you've had to address with parents? or extra supports offered? That's a really good question. And I know some of you have, you know, more recently reopened, some of you have been reopened forever. Anybody have any feedback on that one? Yeah. The director at our church um, had to kind of do a phase in when we first got started with people coming back. So they started out with a registration, and I know several other churches um, that you guys represent have done that too. Started out with registration, so we kind of knew what we were working with. How many, how many volunteers do we have, and how many students can we actually receive and take good care of? So I know that we have three different rooms that we use for various age groups and various abilities, and they only opened one room to start with. And that was our um, snoozling room, our, our sensory room. And so we, we did that for a little bit and then more and more families were feeling comfortable about coming back. And so then we reached out for more and I'm saying we um, really, it was the director that did all that work and I just kind of watched and supported and encouraged her. Um, but so now we, I think we're not back, um, like Diana was saying, we're not back to where we were before 2020 hit, but. Uh, but we're definitely further along than we were when we first opened up, which was really a little bit longer than life groups opened up. I think the, the children's program was at least another three months maybe since then. Um, so, but a phase in is, is recommended because that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Christy says, we're having teens come back who haven't been in two years and we've changed a lot of the routines to help with social distancing. It takes some work to help returning teens adjust to new routines and pretty much an entirely new volunteer staff. Yeah, so it's it's in some ways it's like starting new, although like we've said so many times that does present a lot of really cool opportunities to do things a little differently that maybe are actually better. Um, I know that's been the case in um, our children's ministry. Um, we've completely revamped how what our Sunday mornings look like and, um, you know, in a way that would not have happened um, if it you know, if we hadn't had to do all these things, <laughs> so. Anybody else have any surprises to share as they've come back or, um, you know, and oh, here, um, Andrew says, with COVID, adult day programs were shut down and reopening is slow. Yes, and that's definitely, I mean, I, mean, I feel like no matter where you are in the country, that's been the case or the, sorry, in North America, that's been the case. Um, have your churches helped these folks slash families at all? It seems empty church buildings could be utilized on weekdays for such purposes. Has this conversation happened? Does anybody have anything to share on that? I, I have one little story to share. Um, so a family not affiliated with our church, um, has an adult, you know, like a 40 year old, I think, um, who was in a program. And then let me think if I get this right. The, the, so everything was shut down. And so they had to do the program from home. And the mom was actually like the certified paid provider. But now that everything's open, they're not allowed to do the program at home anymore. The mom can still be the provider, but it has to happen not at home, according to whatever the agency is. But they're not comfortable being out in public. So they're not comfortable going to, you know, wherever the other people are going. So they are using our building on Saturdays to do the the program, because that's off site, it's out of their house. It's a room that we have, you know, available on Saturdays. Um, so that's just an example of using the church building in a way to, you know, bless a, a family um, in that kind of situation. Anybody else have anything to share on that one? I see, I see your visual there. <laughs> All right, any other last thoughts or questions? All right, well, then I'll go join my staff for the corned beef lunch. Um, nice. all right. so, <laughs> so thank you all for, for uh, taking the time today. And I look forward to our roundtable in April. Thanks thank so you. Much. Really appreciate it. Take care.